Thank you so much, everybody. And I want to say a warm welcome to all of our PKNU students who are here this afternoon. And I want to say the real VIPs here for, I think, us and moving forward is really all of you. We decided to create this American Corner at this university so that we can better um, be able to reach the next generation of leaders here in Busan. And so we're really, really looking forward to getting to know you across not just today, but really in the next um, ages to come. So with that, we have a very special guest. You've already had a chance to hear her very briefly, um, but now she is going to come impart some of her wisdom onto us, answer some of your questions that she's had. So our Chargé d'Affaires Sakurai is a long-term diplomat. She most recently arrived to Seoul um, in January of 2023, but previously she served across a number of posts across the world, and particularly in the East Asia Pacific region. So before arriving to Korea. She served posts in Laos, in Indonesia, um, as well as in Pakistan and um, in Washington, D.C. as well. So with that, if you could all join me in giving a very big round of applause to our Chargé of the Affairs Sakurai for our special lecture. Thank you so much. Thank you, Chaylin. Thank you, Mr. Hogan. Thank you to PKNU University, most of all, for this chance to um, talk with you today, to get to know you a little bit more. I have to say, for American college students to sign up and volunteer to attend a lecture at 3 p.m., it's very hard to get students to come together. So I really appreciate you spending some of your afternoon um, together with us. And so I think um, you know it shows how much all of you, at, uh, you, students at PKNU, are really dedicated um, to learning, to learning more about the Korea-U.S. relationship, and to strengthening our ties moving forward. And that's why um, our uh, U.S. mission in Korea, our U.S. embassy, and our consulate in Busan, this is why we chose to partner with PKNU. Your university president. President Zhang had a vision um, to make the next 100 years or so of our bilateral relationship strong. And so he taught us the Korean Bali Bali, go quickly, <laughs> to make this American corner happen in six months. The US government is very powerful, but we can be very slow. So we learn from Korea, we can do things quickly um, and well when we, when we do it together. Um, so we'll talk a little bit more about that later today. Um, so anyway, the American Corner, um, uh, I'll mention briefly, it's right there on your campus. Um, there are some books, but we look forward to hosting a lot of different lectures and programs for all of you. One of them that I think that will be exciting is the Global Connect uh, series that I heard the American Corner um, uh, managers will put together, and that's a chance for all of the Korean students to engage with foreign students on the campus. And sometimes you might get older students, like uh, our Admiral Kaprowski might come and pretend to be a student. Um, so you have to invite him, though. But you have to, so if you want to hear from him, you have to invite him, or, or Nolan, our Consul General at, uh, here in Busan. Anyway, we can talk, about, uh, happy to, I want to have questions and engage with you. So anyway, we are um, so pleased to work with this university right the, here in the heart of Busan um, because we're also very interested in how this university is very dedicated to international affairs and marine sciences. I learned from President Zhang that this university was uh, started about a hundred years ago, first as an engineering school, later a marine university got started, and I think in the 1990s you combined into one. Um, and that you're very famous for all of the marine research that you do. Every time I come to Busan, Nolan points out to me, this is the research ship for Pukyong University. I'm waiting for someone to invite me to go on the ship for a, a, you know, a research trip, so please tell President Zhang I'm waiting for that. Um, anyway, so we um, uh, we ho we'll be hosting, or I think you know, an Our Ocean Conference in 2025. And this Our Ocean, so Our, like we, Our Ocean began in 2014, 10 years ago, as an American initiative, which was to get international attention to focus on the serious threats 
that are facing the world's oceans and to really get us to take concrete action around the globe to support marine conservation and sustainable development. Um, you know, President Zhang said, um, compared to, he's, as you know, a marine specialist, he said compared to um, back in the 1990s, there are some fish such as Alaskan pollock, what is that in Korean? It's, it's not as available as it used to be. So he's seeing in his own lifetime some of the changes that are happening in our ocean due to the climate changes. Um, as we all know, that uh, taking care of our oceans is very important and that we all have a role to play to ensure sustainable ocean development. Even our US Navy colleagues or Korean Navy, Navy colleagues who are there to keep our waters and our countries safe um, are observing a lot of changes, I'm sure, as time goes by. And so they also know that we need to work hand in hand across all fields to ensure that our oceans stay safe and sustainable. And so the United States looks forward to seeing all of what you can do, what PKNU can do in marine sciences and to working with us um, to be a very unique hub to address some of these global problems. So we look forward to you telling us um, what we should do first and foremost, what our priorities are, and how we should tackle them. So I want maybe later some, some of you to tell me what your ideas are. Um, and I know that there will be many special events as the conference gets started, and maybe some of you could be volunteers at the, at the conference as well. So let's stay in touch on that. Um, and then for my second part of my opening today, I wanted to talk about um, some of the general messages I would like for all of you um, as you move forward. Being a student is so, um, you have so much freedom. I know you, you have to study, maybe you have part-time jobs, but you have so much more freedom than you will have once you start working for a while and have a family, other commitments, it's great. But um, please enjoy every moment you have now to really think about how you're going to change the future. Um, so I talked to a lot of different people about what kind of advice um, we should give to you as you start on your next journey. So I'll put my advice at the very end. I'm going to change, share a few other stories that my colleagues have given. Um, so the first one I would like to share is from our um, Busan Consul General, Nolan Barkhaus. He has a it's like a satellite of the embassy, a, a sub-office of the embassy right here in Busan. Maybe you've seen him on the news or in the paper. <laughs> anyway, Nolan is from the state of Texas. Has anyone been to Texas? It's huge. It's a huge state. <laughs> Very big place. Um, so his advice is to um, Push yourself a little. You know, find ways to challenge yourself to do something different. And now, like I said, when you have freedom, it's a great time to think about what is some kind of skill that will be useful to you in the future? What is something you're interested in that you can start learning now? Nolan and I both studied Lao, the language Lao, which they speak in Laos, which is very similar to Thai. We both started studying it when we were in our 40s. And I know, yes, that does sound old. And it is a hard language, but it was so hard to learn it when we were in our 40s. Nolan also studied Korean for two years in Seoul, just a couple of years ago. And his Korean is excellent now, but it took so much hard work to get there. Um, so what I'm saying is if when your brains now are very fresh and flexible, it's a great time to think about a skill you want to pick up and to try it out for yourself. And then part of it is, is Nolan feels that when you do something uh, to challenge yourself and you learn something, then you're better able to, what we say in English, pay it forward. To pay something forward is to show kindness to another person um, in return for kindness or a favor or support that you received um, from someone else in the past. We call it a ripple effect. Ripple effect is a na nabi, butterfly, butterfly effect. You know, some small motion now can have a big impact later. So um, think about that. I'm going to ask for, does anyone want to share? What is something they want to 
learn now? What is something they want to challenge themselves with that'll have an impact in the future? Do I see a hand? Not yet. Okay, <laughs> think about it though. <laughs> we'll ask you after. We don't have to say in front of the group. But think of how you're going to um, have an impact that way. Um, the next piece of advice I'm going to share is from Admiral Neil Kaprowski, who's right here. He looks very young, um, and he is in, in his heart, um, <laughs> but he has achieved a very, very high rank in the US Navy. It takes a lot to become an admiral, and most of our uh, US Navy uh, sailors won't reach the rank of admiral. It is very senior. Um, something that Neil would like for all of you to know is that building and nurturing relationships really matters, and it matters now. Um, you want to create relationships and then keep them strong um, because you will rely on them in the future. And a relationship is something that uh, takes time, it takes trust, and you really have to think about not just what you need, but what the other person needs so you can support each other well. Um, so he would like all of you to know that you should um, think about each stage of the relationship and really learn how to cherish and nurture it. And I was very impressed that a sailor thinks exactly like a diplomat, because sometimes we're very different people. <laughs> He's focused on keeping our waters safe. We're focused on more land-based relationships. But it's exactly what we do in diplomacy. Um, we really have to make sure we're keeping our relationships with our partners and friends and allies around the world strong now when we don't have a crisis, when we don't need the help. Because then when we have a crisis or when we need the help, our relationships are already strong. And the important thing between the US-Korea relationship is that it's so strong, there's almost nothing that we can't do together. And there's very little that would ever tear it apart. But we're giving you now, today, that chance to be a part of how we strengthen that relationship. I mean, think about you know some, some personal relationship you might have had where the friendship may have have kind of not worked out or you had a misunderstanding. There's always a way to fix it, but it's always harder to do that. So keep them strong now while you can. And another piece of advice is from a very young diplomat, or young in, in time. I'm not going to talk about her age, <laughs> but young. Uh, she is on, Chaelin, who you met earlier today, is a first to her diplomat. And what she wanted to say is, you know, she wants people who have a passion to really figure it out, or if you don't have one now, it's okay, but to, to kind of have the courage to go with it. For her, her passion is activism. She believes that supporting women, uh, speaking out against uh, challenges in human rights is really important. And especially while you're a student, you have time to really think about how you're going to make a difference. So I'm passing on her advice there. And then lastly, I'll give you um, my advice. And then let's, let's have a conversation with all of us. So my advice is, um, you know, I really want all of you to think about how to get your shoes dirty. Um, and that is, you have to find something that you really want to do. It ties into what I've said, um, my, my colleagues have said, to find a passion, to have courage, to challenge yourself, push yourself out of a comfort zone, and to be willing to fail a little. When you get your shoes dirty, that means that you might fall, that means that you might stumble, but hopefully you have someone there to support you and pick you up along the way. If you just stay on the straight and safe path, your shoes will be clean, but you won't go very far or as far as you could go. When you get your shoes dirty, it's OK, because that means that you're really growing and learning about yourself and making a difference. And so that also means taking risks. We can all learn to be good risk takers. You take small risks, fail a little, and then you're more comfortable and learn how to take even bigger risks ahead. Even for myself in my career, I've had to take risks. I have failed many, many times. I've had many embarrassments in the past. I have had some regrets, but most of my regrets for, for times where I didn't um, push myself to learn something. I think that when we, when we learn, we can be proud of ourselves, 
um, there is a US president whose name is Theodore Roosevelt. I don't have the exact quote in front of me, but I love what he said is that if you're not um, in the arena, if you're not in the ring, so if you're not there fighting and sweating and challenging yourself, um, then you have no right to criticize someone else. It's the people who are really trying that are our heroes and our champions. It doesn't have to be perfect, but if you're getting your shoes dirty and doing your best, um, that's something that we can all be proud of. So those are a couple of just things that I wanted to leave with you, um, and I look forward to more chat. Last quote is, there's a movie my American colleagues will remember. It's called Ferris Bueller's Day Off. It's about a high school student who skips school for one day, and he makes an elaborate plan for why he's skipping school. But the reason he is skipping school is, he said, life moves pretty fast. If you don't stop and look around once in a while, you could miss it. So think about that. What might you be missing if you're not sort of looking around how to find your passion, how to challenge yourself, how to build those um, relationships? Don't tell your parents I said this, but that one <laughs> grade on that one test is probably not going to matter as much in the very long run, in the very long run, than if you really stop to look around and let yourself not miss out on the most important things in life. And that's different for everybody, but you should think about it. What is the most important thing that you want to focus on now so that in 20 years, you have some very great words of advice to give to other college students? All right, that's all for now. <laughs> Anyone have questions or thoughts so we can jump in? I have a list of questions otherwise. Sorry. Yes, but with that, let's give Sardé Chaperes a big round of applause. Thank you so much for your words of wisdom, for really, I think, your thoughtful um, remarks to our future generation. And I was telling um, Professor Chang, you know, maybe close your ears that our Chardé is asking our students to skip <laughs> class, but for, but for good reason, and he fully supports your decisions. Okay. Just um, don't tell him why you're, sk you're skipping, just tell him you're sick. <laughs> <laughs> and so with that, we have time for questions. And many of you submitted your questions ahead of time. We want to say thank you again for your interest and for being here. And our first question is coming from Ms. Um, Tongbin Yoon. Hi, my name is Jongbin Yu. I'm a senior year in PKNU studying English language and literature. Uh, I think it's my first time to question to someone because I'm a little bit shy person, so I'm a little bit nervous, so my voice will gonna be shaking a little bit. Sorry for that in advance. Okay, my question is that, what motivates you in your position that needs a lot of, uh, that represents a country by your own self that needs a lot of sense of responsibility and pressure. Yeah, this is my question. No, <laughs> thank you. And, and your English is fantastic. You didn't sound nervous at all. Um, great job. So your uh, question, how do I, how do I uh, carry out the job? It has a lot of responsibility, right? Um, it is, so I've, I've been lucky to have um, about 20 years of work as a diplomat. Someone please say I look very young for my age. <laughs> you look very young. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, um, and it takes a long time to understand um, how to do some of the job. Um, so it, I've been able to watch a lot of very senior diplomats. How do they um, handle that meeting? How do they handle it when um, a first tour diplomat might make a mistake? which I don't know if Chaylin has ever had that happen to her. <laughs> you know, so I, I um, observe as much as I can. There's never, for me, I don't have one perfect role model. I have many role models that I like to follow for different things. So Ambassador Goldberg, my boss, all of my colleagues' boss, he's so good in uh, policy meeting. A policy is like if the United States want, government wants to do something um, and has made a strategy. He knows how to really describe it in a simple and effective way to Korean government officials 
so that they understand our position and that they might be willing to work with us, work together with us. He is so good at that. And so I watch him and learn from that. He is also a kind of a funny person, not always, but usually funny. So I kind of watch how he tells jokes to people. Um, if it is someone like Chelin, she's so good at making a very warm connection with people. And so I can learn that from her. So think of people who are good at different things. And those are skills that you can pick up on and try to make it your own. You don't have to copy them exactly, but it's good to get ideas and see how you can use it for yourself. So that's one thing. And then the pressure of representing the United States. Um, luckily, we get a lot of guidance from Washington, DC. Washington, DC is where we always go for, for information, for permission to do something. They love telling us what to do. <laughs> so <laughs> we're always able to go to Washington to ask for advice. I think it's the same for the US Navy. Um, so the, the Admiral has an ability to lead his team here in the region in the way that he wants, but he always has um, the big US Navy to tell him what to do on bigger uh, security strategy policies. So there's a lot of ways that you can get help. And then and the, at the end of the day, I can always go back to what does the United States really want to achieve in Korea? Or what does the United States want to achieve in Indonesia and with Indonesia? And using that very broad guidance, I think about what do Korean people want to hear? What is a way I can describe it that makes sense to them? What, do, what does an Indonesian person want to hear? How does it make sense to them? And it's very different for each culture. And so I love learning about other cultures and figuring out how to um, make that happen. But I get nervous a lot, especially if it's on something really tricky. Um, so I try to practice when I can, and I try to take, um, if I go into very serious, meeting on a serious topic. I have a lot of notes. I try to study it in advance. If I have to, I will look at my notes in a meeting. And Korean diplomats and officials will do the same because you don't want to make a mistake. It's OK for us to carry a, note, a notebook with the highlights there because it's better to look at that and say the right thing than to not look at your notes and say the wrong thing. So those are some of my uh, suggestions to you. I know, I wish, on a test it's different, right? We wish we could take our notebook, our notes into a test. <laughs> but once you're out of, out of uh, school, it's a little easier to have your personal notes with you. Thank you, Sharda Sakura. I know many of us across the embassy also really look up to you as a leader, and we learn a lot from seeing her in action as well. Okay. Our next question is from Ms. Hewan Choi. Hi, my name is Hewan Choi, majoring in aquatic life science, aquatic life medicine. Uh, I read some articles of you talking about gender equity a lot, and I'm curious to hear what was the hardest thing of coming back to work after having kids, and what do you think we can do to solve those problems? Okay, and and also I want to thank you for your great lecture. <laughs> thank you. Very good to meet you. Um, it's a great question, um, Heiwan. I, I, um, so I think the hardest um, part for me coming back to work after I, so I have two children. My son is now 15 years old. My daughter is now 12 years old. And each time my, my children were born, I took off three months from work. And I... Um, at the time, the State Department, we had to use our sick leave. We did not have uh, what we call parental leave, leave that is dedicated just to new parents. So now we have parental leave, which is so important because especially for our newer diplomats and colleagues, if they've just started with the US government, they don't have a lot of sick leave saved up. So I'm very um, happy to see that move forward in the United States. I know Korea has um, recently put a lot more benefits for parents out there. Um, so first I'll go to my, my situation. What was hard for me when I came back from work is um, babies are very unpredictable. Um, just like people are unpredictable, but they get sick a lot. So both of my children went to preschool after the three months. And it was really hard because they were sick 
a lot as they were exposed to different germs. So then either my husband or I would have to take sick days to take care of them. So that being flexible, and I always had to try to be a little bit ahead of my work. So if I had to take a sick day, I could easily ask my colleagues to help me with certain things because it was, I had enough time built in. Um, the other hard thing is learning to prioritize because I love um, working, I love my job. It's very hard for me to let go of some things, but I learned that 80% good is good enough. It doesn't have to be 100% good all the time. So being okay with it being just a, a little bit imperfect, it's really hard, but I was able to do that. And then I made a commitment that I was going to be very responsible for my own work whenever I could, and I was going to be the best teammate I could whenever I was in the office, so that people were very um, supportive, again, when I had to take sick leave or something happened, because I knew most of the time I was responsible for my own work, and that um, when I was in the office, I was a, a very good team player trying to help each other out. So I think that was hard for me to get to that stage, but it was so much easier with my daughter because I knew it worked the first time, I could immediately use it the second time. Um, the other thing I want to mention is I, I think it's important for Korean men to take parental leave. You have it as well. And your generation, hopefully the generations who are already in the workforce now, will be taking leave and they'll be showing um, colleagues that both men and women can help share in some of those responsibilities. And the men will see it's actually kind of hard. It's very hard <laughs> to take care of a little baby because it's it, they're so sweet. It's so wonderful and magical, but it is hard. They cry a lot. They like <laughs> you change their diaper and their di diaper is dirty two minutes later. Um, it's a lot of work. And so I think if you can kind of help be that you know second generation to to uh, participate in childcare, that'll make a big difference in the long run. Um, I I also think it's a stage. And as cute as little babies are, they grow up. And so now my children can take care of themselves a lot. So it'll be hard for a little while, um, but then you move on to a different stage with them. So it changes. And then you're able to take on more responsibility. So if you're at a time in your life where you have to scale back on your work, um, just be patient with yourself. And then when your children are a little older, you can um, as we say, put put your foot on the, the gas pedal again and go a little faster. Mm -hmm. So I hope um, young women who are thinking of having a family think of that. It it comes in stages. Um, try to try to stay ahead of your work when you can without putting too much pressure on you. Be a good teammate so that when you're out, the team will take care of you. Um, and men do take that time off, and you'll you'll appreciate you'll, you'll appreciate when you're back in the office. <laughs> Thank you, Sharjah Sakra. And I believe due to time, this may be our very last question that we have um, from Son Hyo Won. Uh, uh, hello, I'm Son Hyo. I'm a senior major in political science and international relations. Uh, I have uh, one question. Can you explain what is the role and strategy of the United States for peace on the Korean Peninsula? Right. Excellent question. That's and uh, something that all of our U.S. government, um, both in Washington and our US go all of our U.S. government agencies who are here in Korea are thinking about every day in our work. You know, how do we maintain peace and stability in the Korean Peninsula? Because that has, as we were saying, a ripple effect, the na Nabi effect um, in the Indo-Pacific region itself. So. I'll go um, briefly into different ways that we do that. Number one, the most important one is that our security relationship between the United States and Korea has to be completely intertwined um, where we are working together on all of the challenges. So whether it's something like uh, cybersecurity crimes or um, you know, weapons and um, any kind of, you know, the threats from North Korea, we're looking at each challenge in the security area and making sure that we have the best, best analysts, the best strategists, the best planners, and the best training happening at the same time. And we have to be very 
dynamic, meaning we have to be ready to change very quickly. And we also have to know how we, um, you know, what are we going to do? How do we express some of these concerns or plans to North Korea in that we want to make sure that we're not doing anything that could be misunderstood? So peace and stability takes a lot of effort on all fronts in the security bucket. On the other hand, at the same time, we want to make sure that our economies are working together and that our people are building that foundation that I mentioned, those relationships that are going to keep us strong. When we have dynamic, vibrant economies, that makes a difference in security as well. For example, if one country isn't able to get enough food or one country isn't able to get enough fuel or other resources that impacts your ability, um, any country's ability to keep their defenses, to keep their country safe. Because if you're worried about where you're going to get food or water or fuel, um, that's taking away what you can do to um, maintain security. So all of these factors um, play a part in the bigger picture of working together. Um, and all of you, too, have a role in that security. How are you thinking about, again, how to solve challenges in the future? You may not think that marine um, fisheries and safety um, will have that big an impact on this peace and security in the Korean Peninsula, but it does. Because if your waters are unsafe, um, if you can't have free navigation through the waters because there are um, environmental damages that are are creating a, a challenge that has a huge impact on security. I won't go too far in that's that's more uh, uh, you know Admiral Kaprowski's lane, but but you know may not think you may not think that something you're studying now will make a difference, but it really does. And you as young people have this incredible democracy, this wealthy, powerful democracy you're working in. And so whatever you do, you need to make sure you're helping to keep it that way. Um, you know, human rights, uh, making sure that um, all people in Korea have, an, have an equal access to a brighter future, um, that businesses can thrive, and that's your part in keeping uh, peace in, in this region. And peace in the Korean Peninsula means peace uh, throughout the Indo-Pacific as well. So we're counting on our partnership together to have that impact. Does that, are you ready? To, to play your role? Yes, <laughs> all of you have a role. Even speaking English has a, has a part. We just talked about a woman who's 48 years, right? A Korean, Korean colleague who has worked um, for the US Navy in, in Chinhe for 48 years. That is older than me. Can you believe that? <laughs> she's, worried, she's worked for the US Navy longer than I've been around, I think. We'll just ignore the facts. <laughs> but anyway, and I know her English must be incredible. I know the knowledge that she's carried from almost five decades of working on these issues. Even if it's not directly, she has absorbed and learned so much. And the things that she teaches to each US Navy sailor and officer that she has worked with has an impact. So it starts small, but what you're doing in Busan makes a huge difference. You know, be proud of being from this city that was not, you know, Seoul was not featured in a Marvel movie. It was Busan. <laughs> when they talk about beautiful beaches in Korea, there is no picture of Incheon. <laughs> there is Hyundai Beach. You, you know, you're, you're so close, you're a gateway to so many parts of Asia, direct flight to Bangkok, which Nolan is going to take uh, for a work conference soon. You're so close to Japan, just a quick ferry ride away. Um, access to so much, so I, I, I want to be from Busan too. <laughs> so much to be proud of. So think of that um, as, you, as you go about your life. Seniors, you have so much ahead of you. If you're not a senior this year, you have even more time ahead of you. And even if you're wondering about what path your life will take, as long as you get your shoes dirty, you strengthen those relationships. You push yourself and challenge yourself to really um, find your passions and pay it forward. Um, Korea is in great hands ahead. Thank you so much Thanks. for those remarks. Let's give her another big round of applause and questions. 
So luckily, for those of you who weren't able to answer all of your questions, our charge has very graciously agreed to be at our open house right across the street at our American corner um, after this. And so please feel free to stop by to say hello. Um, we would love to get to know you a little bit before we head out. And before we close our official opening ceremony here this afternoon, we would love to take a group photo with everyone who is here today. And so while our, I know, PKNU Blue students are going to work on removing the podium from the stage, if we can make about three rows kind of covering the cross section from this table to the end table. Um, for those of you who are a little bit on the taller end, if you could make sure to stand in the third row. If you're a little bit shorter, make sure to stand in the first row so that we can see all of your beautiful faces. And we'll take a group photo, and then we'll have our closing of portion of this event, and then head on over to our Busan American Corner. Thank you. Thank you.